Just making a little map here while we wait for people to trickle in. And pulling it up on my other phone so that I can see. Welcome, welcome to Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. I'll be doing a a la prima still life today. See how far we can get in an hour. You are welcome to paint along with me. If you do, we'd love to see what you're working on in the comments below. Uh, I'll be getting more into it here at 11.30. Um, what I have down so far is just kind of a map of, um, just making a little map here. Oops. While we wait for people. To turn that down. <laughs> I have another screen so that I can see what people are saying. If there are any questions or any comments. Yeah, and like I said a moment ago, here in about four minutes, I'll dive in a bit more. Um, what we'll be painting today is those two oranges. So. Right now, what I have marked out is just kind of uh, the direction of the lean on one of them, um, and I'm kind of trying to mark mark out a, a where I, approximately where I think the top of the small one. Uh, I have a mandarin and like a normal orange, and so I'm just trying to get the uh, ratio or the proportions right, and so just making a couple tiny marks to get started. I toned the whole thing kind of a brownish orange. Um, just to uh, get us started here and not have it be too bright. So, yeah, not making a whole lot of progress just yet. Here in about three minutes, um, I'll kind of start making more big decisions. But if you're just joining us, my name is Jonathan Fusco. This is Artful Connections. I'm an Art Force Iowa mentor. And today we're doing it all a la prima. And I invite you to paint along with me if you like. We'd love to see what you're working on in the comments below if you should join in along. Otherwise, uh, I hear tell that this is not so terrible a thing to put on in the background. And if you just want to hang out, we're happy to have you. In about two more minutes. So, yeah, just worried about proportions right now. Not concerning myself with much else. Trying a new setup. Those of you who've watched me in the past might recognize uh, that this is not where I normally paint. But it's been a little hard to see what I'm doing in a lot of the past recordings, so I'm hoping this is easier. That's what I'm hoping. Um, we'll see if it turns out so so fortunate here. Um, all right, just one minute to go. My name is Jonathan Fusco. This is Artful Connections with Art Force Iowa. Doing an all la prima of uh, a couple oranges. I have a mandarin on the right here. You get off, they're just off screen. You can't quite see them, but um, mandarin on the right, and then I have a normal, I don't know what you call them, a normal orange <laughs> on the left. Um, I was going to do this on panel. I had a little panel set aside, but it dawned on me that that panel is going to need some love before it's ready to be painted on. I thought it was ready to go, but as I was like starting on it, and I started making some marks on it, I was like, ooh, that's not going to work. Um, so, I think we're ready to start. We'll just dive in. Um, and yes, please do paint along with me today. Um, if you would like, if you're just hanging out today, that's also cool. Um, I have another screen here, so I should be able to see any comments or questions anybody has. Um, what I have so far down um, is just a couple basic like uh, positioning things. So like um, the first thing I did was I put a couple tiny marks in a couple inches in just to make sure that I didn't go too far off center with this. Um, I thought this should probably be fairly centered. Um, and I might even let it come a little bit closer to the edge than it is. Um, I've kept things really simple so that I can make decisions like that um, without going too far. Um, 
Yeah, kind of a brown glaze, just to sort of kill the white and get rid of that, because that drives me crazy. Um, and um, oh, this line here is just to, you know, this one here is just to indicate the tilt of the orange, um, which will just make it a little easier, because uh, the oranges tend to have, like, sort of lines that sort of trace from their little stem spot. This is a sort of trace along the surface, which can make uh, following those round lines a lot easier. Um, and uh, yeah, we might... No, I kind of like our zoom. I think our level of zoom right now is actually pretty cool. So maybe we keep that for now, and if we decide to make them bigger, we can do that in a moment. So um, I'm just going to start diving in here and start making some big decisions. So I'm pretty sure we have these where we want them. Again, I'm... Looking at the still, especially in these early stages, trying to look at the still life as often as I look at uh, my painting. And it would be really easy to make this little orange too little. Um, something I recognize right away is that like my temptation is to make it way smaller, but it isn't that much smaller. Uh, so just trying to be mindful of that. I'm doing my sketching in bright red, um, not for any particular reason, I just kind of thought it would be cool. If some of that shines through in the end, that'll be all right with me. Uh, particularly in the wrinkles, I have them sitting on a t-shirt, a white t-shirt. Um, I chose white because I was hoping it would catch some of the color reflecting off of the orange. Because white has a way of being pretty reflective. And I'm sort of just tracing my shadows right now. And I think, ooh, you know what? I had my line and it was still in the, and it was the wrong spot. I think that's actually where our little nubbin is. Um, and if you're just joining us, uh, my name is Jonathan Fusco. This is Artful Connections with Artful uh, Art Force Iowa. And today I'm doing an alla prima. I have a couple of oranges here. Um, they are off screen so that you can better see what I'm doing. Um, keeping both in the screen at once has proven to be not awesome. Um, so, um, yeah, it'll become clearer what they are, I think, as we proceed. And I won't have to keep describing. Oh, yeah, I'm painting oranges. Um, I have a mandarin orange on the right and uh, your more standard orange on the left. And yeah, if you want to paint along with us, we invite you to do so. We'd love to see what you're working on. If you're just hanging out today, that's also totally cool. Happy Monday. I love these Still Life Mondays. These are becoming my favorite day of the week. I've been working on a bunch of other stuff, so it's kind of nice to just like have a really simple project with a kind of a simple... Um, finish line, you know, instead of wondering how the heck to finish a thing, it's like, well, I just got to paint the oranges, like, I know how to do that, um, and, uh, what I have down so far, if you're just joining me, um, is I'm just kind of getting proportion and positioning, um, I'm tracing out shadows as well, just like any landmarks, um, to help me like make sure everything's right where I want it. Um, that's that's what I'm worried about right now. That's the concern right now. And actually, one of the wonderful things about doing it this way, yeah, um, we're gonna gonna kill some of that. Um, we're not too worried about any of that. I just kind of want to blur the line a bit because I need to move that line. Down here. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, there's kind of a nice highlight right here. So just kind of tracing out all my little landmarks. So like anywhere it gets like brighter, or I notice a change in the lighting, um, that's getting isolated. I, it just kind of helps me remember um, later when I come in with the color I want, where I'm putting it. Plus, if any of those process marks survive, I think they look kind of cool. So I don't fight that. Um, we didn't do a pre-drawing today, so we're doing all of our sketching and paint, which, um, playing with fire a little bit with that, but 
I realize now I need to bring this in. And then, yeah, cool. And we can even kind of just wipe that away. Yeah. Sure can. Yes, we can. Cool. And, yeah, um, I will be posting the finished image on my personal page, Jonathan Fusco Fine Art. Um, I'm also on Instagram, just Jonathan Fusco, J-O-H-N-A-T-H-A-N. If you are just joining us, this is Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. I am doing a still life today um, for Art Force Iowa. And we invite you to paint along with me if you like. We'd love to see what you're working on. Or if you're just hanging out, that's cool too. I'm still just marking things out. Um, I was going to do this on panel. But... My panel wasn't ready. I thought it was. And then I started making marks on it. And it became clear to me that it wasn't. So um, what I'm doing right now is I'm carving in um, the fabric that the oranges are sitting on. I, I just put them on an old white t-shirt. Um, because I was hoping the white would catch some of the color. And I'm just trying to mark out some of these landmarks without getting too carried away. Um, I kind of think we might end up carving that in sooner rather than later, though. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, one of the first things I tried to establish was a fairly similar distance between the left and the right edge of the piece to uh, the subjects. So that's about all I had done when we first started. And it has paid off. I have this really gnarly habit, I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but I have this um, super gnarly habit of um, losing track of center. So like whenever I try and draw and I think I'm drawing something in the middle when I take a step back like the whole thing has gone whap to the right or the left and uh, it's never <laughs> it's never what you want uh, so trying to think of ways to get around that and ooh, you know what this actually goes way higher yes it does all right yeah, that goes more like that which means that what I have down gets white. Yes. There we go. We'll be going over all this anyway, so it doesn't really matter a whole lot how clean the wipe looks, but since we're on camera, I'm going to try and make it look a little prettier. There we go. Perfect. Um, cool. So um, I think we're going to start throwing some color down just to make this a little more... A little more exciting. Let's make a big decision. Right now I am mixing up. Um, I'm going to start with kind of a red-orange for our shadows. Uh, so it won't be that far off from the color we're using, uh, which is Indian yellow, uh, lemon, cadmium lemon, um, and then the naphthol red. I like naphthol for mixing with yellow. It's... Um, it can be kind of hard to find. I, for a while, I thought you're supposed to use cadmium, but um, I find cadmium just turns brown, which isn't really what you want. Not super exciting. So we are going to. There we go. Just kind of start off with. Yep, there we go. That's the color. And actually, we can go darker than that. We're going to want to go darker than that. Just kidding. I just said that's the color, and then I changed my mind. And that's okay. We can change our mind. These are our oranges. Yeah, I'm painting in oil today. Um, I've been really loving oil. I think I'm a full convert. I used to paint in acrylic, but I think I'm a full convert. I don't know if I'm going back. Yeah. So... Carving in our 
shadows. I want to leave some of that empty, and the reason... Oof, actually I want to bring that down. Uh, the reason is that there's going to be a reflected light right there, and we don't want to lose that. So, switching back to my other brush really quick. And there's kind of a cuteness to this that I haven't quite captured. There's like a squatness, and I realize now that I haven't quite got that in, so let's just do that now. Right on. Right on. But you know, just like everything else, we're just starting simple. You start simple and you slowly iterate. Um, I like working in layers, so we're doing layers. Everybody's got their way. Um, but layers have always made the most sense to me. Most of the artists I follow work this way. Um, oh, this is a little bit old in that. Yes, it is, but I still got some. All right, so we're going to start carving in this color now onto our big orange. Yes. Yep, and that's the stuff. That's what we want. That's what we want. Do invite you to paint along with me today. If you're just watching, that's cool too. If you have any questions, I do have the feed up on my other phone, the one that isn't filming. Um, I have my old deactivated phone. I've just kind of kept it around as like a little tiny screen for references and Netflix. And uh, right now it's the one that's filming because um, it, it holds a charger. My current phone, the one that I use, has it like it just uh, the, the port is goofy and it does not want to hold a charger. So. A little harder to put it on a tripod and ask it to film for an hour, it'll just die. All right, so I have a pretty decent little basic outline here. I think we're gonna get a little crazy. I really want to get that white in, I want to do that now, or at least get some of it in. So, picking a brush, I think, will be what we want. I think this is the one. Just gonna use a nice long one. Get make sure it has any. So I, some of these brushes I haven't ever used before, um, and they have kind of a. Sometimes they have little loose hairs on them, so it's just kind of good to give them a little shake. Give them a little shake, and make sure they're not gonna be dropping hairs all over the painting. Not what you want. Uh, I'm using zinc white. Zinc white is a transparent white. It doesn't. Um, get overpowered uh, uh, quite so quickly. Um, it tends to let the pigment do a lot more work, and right now, at this stage, I definitely don't want it to overpower anything. So uh, this will be kind of a white, but I'm going to let it brown out a bit. Um, I'm mixing it with the brown I have on the board already. And then I'm throwing some Indian yellow into it. Um, I'm going to do a little nap fall. I think what I want is magenta, actually. A little bit. And then, yeah, some more Indian yellow. And then maybe a touch of ultramarine to dull it. Just to kind of make it a little more brown. And then, yeah, zinc white. You know, for these early marks especially, it can help to throw a little medium in uh, using uh, Gamsol and linseed oil. I tried using safflower for a while. I like that it doesn't pollute the color as much, but um, it takes so long to dry, and sometimes I like to let things dry and go over them, and linseed's just better. If you want something to dry in a day or two, linseed's just better. All right, so, ooh. So that doesn't probably look very different on the screen, but this will be good for building up some thickness. But maybe, maybe we do 
do a little flake wipe. Yeah, and then a little zinc on top. Yeah, we'll go, we'll make this more exciting. We will. Is that thing, I, this is something I, no one ever like taught me this outside of Bob Ross, but he always like tapped the brush into the paint. <laughs> and it really does help. It really does make a difference. Um, there we go. Yeah, okay. So... That's probably more like it. And we're going to be working some blues into this later. Um, but for now, it's going to stay kind of warm. The blues will be for the shadows, which will help to really push them back. They'll mix a little bit with the warmth, is the hope. Turn a little bit gray, and it'll help sink them. Um, That's the hope. We'll see. I do kind of like the way paint sketches look, just like on their own. It's kind of a fun stage. It gets so much grosser before it gets better. Like, this is like well, the last time it looks good for about 30 or 40 minutes. Um, maybe that's not fair. But it feels right. It feels right. Okay. So I'm just throwing some of our backdrop in here. Of course, at this point, these could just be apples. Yeah, it's not really clear what they are just yet, but we'll get there. We'll get there. There's kind of a cool swirling quality to what's happening, and I might end up playing that up, where it sort of looks like clouds almost swirling around them. We might play that up. Anyone who's watched before knows I'm not really a photorealist by any stretch. I, I'm a little bit more interested in painting around reality. But, you know, you still use it as a reference. It still informs every decision you make. But, you know, paint, painting is an opportunity to play. You know, in photos, photos, we have photography to capture things exactly as they are. Although that's not really what photography is about either anymore. Um, but the point is, with painting, it feels like if you can play, then maybe you should. Alright. At least that's what I like to do. Oh, I forgot to turn on music again. A nice painting in silence, though. Yeah, sorry, I don't have a whole lot to say about what I'm doing just yet, because it's sort of, you know, we're just kind of building up paint on the background, really. Um, the colors I'm choosing are all in the name of Harmony. Um, I've been doing a lot of really purple paintings. One reason I chose oranges on a white was to kind of get away from... <laughs> Uh, this tendency I have towards purple, so I tried to get um, get my darks out of the picture because normally when I start drifting towards purple, it's when I see shadows, and so there might be a little cameo, but I didn't want it to be like the whole story, you know. So um, I just wanted to prove that I can paint in something other than purple. It does happen, not very often. But it does happen. All right. All right, all right. Cool. 
So, yeah, that's cool. All right. Kind of start going in with a little bit of the blue right now. Which kind of a green almost, even. Just to do some of this now. Um, in part because um, when I start getting into the oranges, I'm a little bit afraid I won't be able to stop. Um, so we're just going to do some of this now. I will have to come back to it. I think that's just the way it is. But... It should pay off. And I'm, I'm going to start getting one of my darks ready um, now because there's a spot that I just want. And I've heard a couple different schools of thought when you should do shadows. I know some folks think, oh, you should do the shadows first. Shadows first, then grow lighter. Uh, I've heard of the opposite direction. Each one claiming that one pollutes the other if you do it the other way. And I, I don't know. You can't both be right. So I just kind of change my mind about that <laughs> every time. Um, we are working on oranges today. Uh, they are just off screen. They're like right here. Um, but I wanted you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So what I'm painting should become a little bit clearer once I get into it. But, um, yeah, I, I've noticed that when I tried to get the still life and the painting in the frame at the same time, it became really hard to see what I was doing. So, yeah. We'll just kind of develop it slowly and it should become clearer later. But yeah, right now I'm carving in my shadows, the really deep dark ones. There's some really nice rich shadows right underneath the fruit. And that's what I'm trying to mark in, at least a little bit right now. All right. All right, um, we are going to switch gears. We're gonna switch gears, here we go. And start making some marks on the orange again. Um, I think, I think, I think that that is still not quite in the right spot. So move that. I just had it a little bit high. But what it might be, actually, is that I just had it too small. Maybe that's why it's driving me crazy. As I'm working, I'm trying to look at my still life as often as I'm looking at the painting itself. Um, when you don't do that, you start painting things as you want them to be and not as they are. And if we're doing a still life, uh, I mean, look, every intention is everything, but if the intention is to paint what's there and use it as a reference, well, then we should be painting it as it is, not as we want it to be. We should be painting oranges not as we remember them, not as we think about them, but as they actually are, which is just a bunch of light bouncing off of a surface. And in fact, even more accurately, I don't even know if you can go that far. You can really only say that it's... it's um, light being interpreted by your retina, which is a flat surface. And um, basically just means it's a bunch of shapes. It's just a bunch of shapes and colors. And since we're trying to transfer it to a flat surface, um, that's just the easiest way to think about it. and not get caught up in what it is. It doesn't really matter what it is, it just matters what the light is doing to your retina. What matters is what you see, not what it is. If that makes any sense. As soon as you start getting caught up in what it is and describing names to the symbols, 
Well, then you come into danger of not really seeing. As I'm making these marks, um, I am trying to keep in mind the surface of the orange. Apologies, I have a roommate passing through. I don't know if you can... hear that, but... I think he's moving on. Well, one of the things that's next, I think, is going to be clearing some of that extra material off right there. And I think we're going to do a little of that right here, too. Ooh, you know what? We need to bring that in, which will be easier with... Constantly making adjustments. As you notice them, we're just making adjustments. Yeah. Sorry if I go quiet, I'm just thinking. That's the other reason I wanted to do a background color, was just to kind of give me something to color in back here as I push and pull on the oranges themselves. Yeah, which actually, funny enough, actually moves this a little bit. This moves, yeah, since I moved that top barrier, this goes down. And then this moves a little bit too. We'll just keep moving the stem. This is good, though. I put it at a tilt in part because I thought it might make this a little bit funny. Uh, not haha -ha funny, but just a little goofy. And it, it is uh, throwing me a little bit for a loop, which is good. All right. I think that that's... I keep a mirror whenever I'm pretty sure I'm not seeing anymore. I keep a mirror just to make sure things look... Right. Yeah, we're good. That's cool. All right. Right on. Yeah, the mirror flips things, uh, makes them kind of new again. If ever you've been staring at something too long, you don't want to use the mirror too often, because uh, then you'll get used to the mirror image too. Um, it also helps to take a step back, turn things upside down. Um, all of those things can help. Uh, help to highlight if something's going wrong. Ooh, we have a bunch of cadmium lemon out, and I think it's time we start just loading that on. Cadmium lemon is one of my favorite yellows. It's just so gosh darn rich. It just screams and yells. Um, cadmiums are kind of a mixed bag, to, for me anyway. I, I, I have mixed feelings about them, but I really like... My cadmium lemon. It's just really good for creating really nice, rich highlights. And yeah, as I said earlier, I uh, I don't anticipate finishing this in an hour, um, but I'll post the finished product on, on my page which is Jonathan Fusco Fine Art, or um, I'll also be putting it on Instagram, which is just Jonathan Fusco, at Jonathan Fusco. Pretty simple. Um, my name has two H's in it, though, so spelling is listed right next to this video. Um, 
you know, I suppose these are really more demonstrations of how I start paintings. Um, it's a little bit hard to show you how I finish paintings, just because I don't know if that would be very entertaining. It's a lot of um, really tiny decisions. <laughs> the beginning's always a lot more exciting. You make a lot more progress in the beginning. Um, yeah, that is awesome. So the Mandarin is a little bit redder, and I want to capture that. So I am going to throw some Naphthol Crimson in that um, uh, cadmium lemon. It's hopefully still going to glow how we want it to though. Yeah. Yeah, we just want this to be a little redder. Right on. This is when the exciting stuff happens. I think is the beginning. Because after that, yeah, you know, you're just going around in circles making teeny tiny marks. I think in a time lapse it would be cool. Um, but that's not what we're doing now. I'm much better at starting stuff than finishing it, is the truth of it. I have so many unfinished pieces in this room. I kind of don't want to admit <laughs> uh, just how many. But. There we go. She said, yeah, I, um, I had a drawing instructor who described well, she was on my drawing, but it's the same thing. That's the that's the thing. It's like, doesn't matter what medium you're working in, if you're drawing with me or painting with me today. It really doesn't matter. Um, a lot of the same principles apply, but she described the drawing as uh, a sculpting process, and for whatever reason, that really worked for me, that visualization. Because, um, yeah, you feel like you're just constantly shaving things off. You know, pulling things out. It feels a lot like sculpting. You like make your basic shape and then develop it, pull it, push it. Um, and it feels like you're carving into like a lump of clay almost, but I guess it's all flat. But it's just kind of a way of thinking about it that might be helpful. Um, it helps me. Um, but there's, all, there's so many different ways to think about it, but that's, um, that's one that stuck with me. That and like the old um, focusing a camera um, idea you're trying to render everything all at once. That's most useful, especially for trying not to get too ahead with any particular part uh, of the piece. So not overdeveloping anything, uh, trying to keep it all kind of moving in the same basic rate. And I'm just moving, removing a little material so when I add the highlight later. Um, and in fact, I might just add that highlight now. Why don't we just do that now? Um, I just need to get another brush. I want one that's pretty clean. Yep, there we go. Yeah. And, um... So I'm pulling out the cadmium lemon, and I have flake white. I don't have titanium white down right now. Uh, I think flake white's gonna be what we want. It's kind of translucent. It's a little bit denser than zinc though um, and I think it'll be really nice for these highlights I'm still trying to figure out what flake white is for um, it's still kind of a new color to me I've been using it for a little over a year now but it's I still feel like I'm uh, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what it's for I know that old masters used flake white primarily for um, skin tones uh, to create um, kind of that thin, translucent quality. And since an orange has a skin, it seems fitting to me that we use it for our orange. And everything I'm doing, I'm tracing along the surface of the shape. Um, trying to pretend as though my brush is wrapping and brushing along the surface of the orange. Cool. All 
All right, what's next? I am actually going to switch back to the sheet behind. Yep, we're switching back. All right, so grabbing some flake white and zinc both and to combine them. Why not? Let's just see what happens. And actually my white uh, that I've been mixing on here is slowly turning kind of green and I do not mind. Uh, that's going to be really nice for um, making these feel really distinct. That warmth will still be there. We're not going to lose the warmth. It's just going to uh, help mute it, unify the surface, and uh, create kind of a nice distinct contrast. And in truth, in life, there is kind of a bluish quality to the sheet, um, but I like the green better. And it will achieve the same effect. So we're going to embrace it. Just going to check the time here. 25 minutes to go. Oh, we got a pretty decent little start here in 35 minutes. Not bad. Not bad. Took a second to get going, but not bad. All right. One other reason I'm not playing music, I think, is there's some part of me that wonders if it's only good for me. Like, it's being picked up by my phone speakers, and then, uh, yeah, so you get that weird echoey, tinny quality that just isn't necessarily what you want to listen to. Um, whereas, you, know, you don't really need super high fidelity to talk, and you don't need super high fidelity. Uh, for these little brush sounds, which are kind of the highlight of the process. If there's like any sound of painting that's like particularly nice, I think it's probably that sound right there. So um, I'm getting kind of a nice brighter white now. Uh, we already have a lot of tone back here. I don't need to get real fussy with it just yet. Um, so we're just going to let the highlights describe kind of the, 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 the topography, I guess. Of the sheet. I keep calling it a sheet. It's a t-shirt. It's an old t-shirt that I'm not sure I'll ever wear again. But it makes for a nice white thing to put fruit on to reflect their colors. Yeah, I'm just building up a history. Thank you all for joining me today. It is a privilege. I really appreciate the opportunity to share my home practice. My studio is at my home. Much cheaper to pay one rent check. But I get the appeal of an off-site workspace too. All right, so um, something I think I'm gonna add that we haven't yet that might just pay off is um, there's kind of a I want to create uh, something behind the t-shirt sort of this space up in here and there are some things in life that are there right now. Um, I don't know how much of it I'm going to render. I'm at least going to render this part. I have a, a board, um, a piece of a foam core board right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and set that there. And then 
Yeah, you know what? Let's just go for it. Let's just do the whole table edge here. Um, and then the question will be, well, we'll get there. But that kind of helped create a little more visual interest anyway. Gives you a little more to look at. All right. And the... Uh, yeah, um, sketching in red is like my new favorite thing. <laughs> it's a little obnoxious, but I just love it. Um, I've been doing it a lot in my drawings lately. For a while, I was uh, I had this idea like, oh, this should be getting the the sketch should be like the darkest part or one of the darkest parts. And anymore, it's like definitely not. Um, my sketch marks are now. Oftentimes, sort of, the, the hope is that they're sort of glowing. I don't know if I'm always successful in that. Um, in painting, it's a little easier to achieve that effect. In drawing, I've been having a little bit of trouble, but anyway, we're not drawing today, we're painting. Um, all right. All right. So. Do I have the color I want? No, not quite. I'm going to throw some more blue. I want it to... Yeah, I want it to be kind of a... Yeah, it's almost like a... Like, it's almost the color of skin if you're really not feeling well. Um, it's almost the color of... Like, rotting skin. That's what we want. <laughs> Which is a little gross, I realize, but um, it's a nice gray. And I want, I want that gray to help set it back. I don't know how else to describe that. It's like a greenish, brownish, grayish, orangish color. And I've just put a bunch of colors into it to achieve that. And I'm keeping it a little pale. I think I'm going to darken it a hair before I go in with another layer. Yeah, let's try that. Let's try. Cool. Cool. Well, I think that's pretty good for now. Although I've kind of got myself in trouble if this thing's supposed to get done today, but... I mean, done is relative. Um, I think there's going to be a point where I'm going to start rendering the thing in the center. I know I was talking about the camera and rendering everything at the same level, but I think for a piece like this, having like some of the process marks, ex you know, exist on near the edge, but having it get tighter and tighter in the center, I think that can be actually a pretty cool effect. Uh, also, this needs to go off of the frame, which means this does too. Yeah. Cool, we got it. We've got it. Um, fabric is fun. It's easy to get lost. Um, a trick that I've been using, and it helps a bit, um, is squinting. It can really help to isolate your biggest landmarks. So I've been doing a lot of squinting today. Just so I don't, because if you, if you can establish your landmarks, just like in any landscape, and really, I mean, what is fabric? Fabric is just a really gnarly landscape. Um, just pick out your landmarks, pick out your your peaks and your valleys. Yeah, like for instance, right there, and. My kingdom for that green again. Let's just kind of grab a new brush and just sort of carve that in. We're just going to throw some 
There's like a really nice little valley right here. I think that that's gonna help too. Yep. Yeah. And then switch to the other brush. I try to. I usually have like at least two or three brushes in my hand at any given time if I'm doing it right. Cool. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I started this thing, and I think I had it in my head that this was going to be a lot more zoomed in. But then I was, like, starting it, and I was thinking, oh, wouldn't it be cool if... And so here I am now getting way more involved in the fabric than I initially intended. Like, just how much of it um, I've, I've, like, set myself up to render. But I think it's going to be, for the best, I think it's actually going to be pretty cool when it's all done. Uh, kind of gives you... A, a nice contrast because there's going to be these little like you know this like sort of hard surface here and then we can kind of play up the softness of the fabric um, like next to the oranges it's funny i almost forgot what i was drawing i really try not to think of them as oranges while i'm painting them it's just easier to to sort of again drop the labels it's not an orange it's an orange shape and it isn't even really that. It's a yellowish orange shape with a purplish uh, shadow and, a, and like kind of a gray reflected light. I mean, you know, just reduce it to what you actually see, not what you call it. Um, and it'll be easier to paint it. And really with the fabric, I should be doing the same thing. Um, it doesn't uh, really matter that it's fabric. What matters is what it's doing and how you can capture it and then also leave room for play at least that's what I'm doing is leaving room for play yeah okay and we want the red brush again should have still been in my hand but I set it down Yeah, there's this, so, and apologies for the pup. Um, I have a feeling somebody is walking by the house. And it's very, very urgent and very, very important that everybody in our house is made aware that other people live on this block. She's a corgi. I'm told this is just what they do. I think it's, um, weren't they shepherd dogs, I want to say? And um, maybe it's just that they're just uh, trying to keep everybody in line. And whenever someone walks by, they're not, who, who, who's outside of the herd, they feel like, well, they need to get in the herd. And so she starts making noise, saying, listen, you need to fall in line. Um, hmm, what next? How much time do we have? 10 minutes, wow, cool. All right, well I stand by, this is a pretty good start. And I'll, I love this camera setup, I'm glad that you guys can see a lot more um, than you could in the past. Maybe I'll do a time lapse of the rest of this. I don't know. I will decide after I have, I guess lunch now. I guess by this point it would be lunch. So, so, I am looking for another brush, because I am going to kill a little bit of this, yep, just a little bit.
And then I just need to take a measurement here. Cool, yeah, so that's about as far off as that goes then. I wanted to mute some of this over here. I like it, but it's distracting and it needs to be muted. On its own, I like it. As a part of the piece, I don't like it being that loud. So what can we do in the last 10 minutes that'll be exciting? Let's throw, you know, I said I was gonna try to avoid purple. Because I paint with purple a lot. I don't know why I said that, because I think I knew deep down <laughs> It's going to be making an appearance, but I don't think it's going to look like purple um, on the R. I think it's going to actually be more of a brown. Um, I do want it to be a little purple, so I'm throwing some more magenta in. Um, I don't describe when I'm making the browns because, like, uh, I throw a little bit of everything in it, and I can't remember what each and every color is. I just know what it looks like. Um, but one of the things I'm adding is ultramarine blue, um, and the ultramarine blue is there because it... Um, well, it's just kind of warm. Uh, it's sort of purpley on its own. And then uh, if you combine that with magenta. And actually, um, this is normally where the shadow, quote unquote, shadow core would be. But th th this is fairly well lit. Um, yeah, that might even be too dark. Hmm, that's too dark. We are going to brighten it up. That's what zinc is for. Zinc is great for bringing things a little bit brighter without killing the color. Titanium white tends to kill the color. All right, so now let's try it. Yeah, it's still pretty dark, but I'm going to keep it. Um, I think we can work with this. I might mute it later. But I think we're going to keep it. I think what it means is that I made the oranges a little too bright. So I might end up pushing the darks a bit more. You know, it's a push and a pull. That's really all it is. We're just pushing and pulling until we get it right where we want it. We're close enough as to make no difference. Because yeah, on my palette, this is kind of a nice, rich... Um, I might throw a little in there though, a little more of the zinc, but not much. Um, but it does lighten up as it comes down. Then it kind of fades into the rest of the orange. So I'm going to switch colors. And. Just do a little blending. Just a little. Cool. And I think we're going to darken that up a bit too. Twelve twenty-five. Cool. Five more minutes. Hours fly by, I tell you. And if you've made something along with me today, please do share it in the comments. We'd love to see it. This has been Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. I'm an Art Force Iowa mentor. We've been doing a still life today, and I will share the finished product. We are actually going to make a bit of a change here. And I'm realizing I don't have the color I want. One second. I know, five minutes left. I'm going to grab colors. What? Well, yeah, but it only took a second. You know, sometimes you don't know until you're in it. And you're in it, and you're like, oh, shoot, I want. 
I want that. The whole limited palette thing is cool, and people who do that, is, they're all really awesome. Level of restraint, yeah. See, um, I have decided I want to go more purple, though. And we're going to throw some of that in there, too. Yep. Yep. That is the right move. It's definitely the right move. That just adds so much depth to it. It makes the shadows feel so much richer. Too crazy over here because this is going to be brightened up. Yeah, this is going to be more involved over there. There's some really cool reflected light coming up over here, and I guess I can try and capture some of that before we part ways today. Just for the sake of sharing that moment with you, let's just see how it goes. And if it sucks, I'll fix it later. But let's just see how it goes. What am I mixing up? I have my Severus Blue, Ultramarine Blue. I'm going to throw a little of the purple in there just to warm it up. Um, this might be too bright. And it might be too thin. But let's just see what happens if I carve a little of that in there. Hmm. Oh, it isn't quite bright enough, actually, is it? Nope. So I'm going to grab some flake white and throw that in there, too. Yeah, and we're just going to try it on this one now. Yeah, so that's a bit more like it. But these reflected light bits, um, definitely, definitely want to keep those blue. Why blue? Because right next to the orange. There is a blueness to it in life, but then putting it in italics just kind of creates that. Yeah, I don't know, I guess I just love that like wide range uh, in color. And with one minute left to go, um, we have a bit of reflected light right here too that goes up along the shadow core. Just kind of play that up a bit. You can kind of throw paint on top of old paint if you brush it on lightly. You put it on the paint, uh, the brush really thick, and then you won't get muddy. That is always the fear with oil is that it will get muddy. But if you're really gentle with it, you can kind of place it on top. Because I'm putting this on top of orange, and we don't want it to turn brown. But yeah, um, with that, that's the start. Um, we'll post the finished thing later. This has been Artful Connections. Our force I was Artful Connections. Uh, my name is Jonathan Fusco, and we'll uh, see you next Monday. Thanks so much.